today is uh, Jesus' birthday celebration, yes. Uh, it's also one of my brother's uh, birthdays today, uh, Jacob, uh, who's not here, um, but anyways, shout out to Jacob. Uh, but it's also Pastor Nikki's birthday, yes. So happy birthday, Pastor Nikki. What a, what a privilege, hey, sharing it with Jesus. Yes, every year. I don't know how you do it. That's amazing. Anyone else's birthday today? Lucky you, Nikki. Someone over here? No? We're all just, yes. Wonderful. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day, Pastor Nikki. Yes, lots of extra celebrations uh, for you. Well, uh, my name is Joseph, and uh, it's wonderful to have you here with us this morning for our Christmas Day service. And uh, who's had breakfast? Most of you. Some of you haven't. Well, I hope it's only an hour service, so you go to your home. You guys saving room for lunch, no doubt. Probably it's going to be good, yes. Uh, thank you for those of you that came out last night to our big carols event too. It was awesome. And uh, carols by candlelight and uh, all the fun and the food. And uh, I know today you will all enjoy spending time with family as well. And uh, if you are visiting us, welcome to Emerge Church Morrowfield. It's good to have you here today. Thank you very much for coming. But today, today is all about Jesus. That's why we're here. It's the Christmas story. And that's who we today celebrate, it's who today we're going to remember, and we're going to honor Jesus today. And that's, that's what you've done, even by coming out to church today, into His house. And it's a wonderful house to be in, it's the house of God, and we are the family of God, and uh, it's wonderful. Um, I've entitled my message this morning, uh, The Most Unusual Gift, The Most Unusual Gift. Let me pray. Jesus, as we open your word this morning, as we remember and celebrate you and honor you today, I pray that you would encourage us and inspire us by your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to get straight into the book of Luke today for us. We're going to start in Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through to 7. And uh, this is the birth of Jesus. You, if you've got your Bibles, uh, you can read along with me, otherwise I've got them on the screen for you. It says this, at the time, the Roman Emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This is the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. Now, this is the beginning of our Saviour Jesus. And it's a very interesting beginning. It's a very unusual beginning. I'm sure you could all agree with that. All that's going on in these couple of verses, uh, setting up prophecies, uh, setting up Rome, uh, setting up the people of Israel, uh, even setting up the Pharisees and the people thinking that Jesus came from Nazareth, when in fact he was born in Bethlehem. There's a lot that is packed into this moment, but not just those things, but for all eternity. This was the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. This was God incarnate, in flesh, come down for you and for me. Born a baby, a gift that came into the whole world for the whole world, to set the captive free, to bring life, to give love, to give joy and to give hope. That's what this moment was all about. Imagine a gift that could do all of that, but would first itself be helpless. A baby having to be helped, but would one day help all mankind. God's gift to you and I is Jesus. And it's a gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Our relationship with Him, it's never ending. It's always new. It's always fresh, personal. Yet for everyone, it's an incredible gift that you and I have. You know, I was thinking about uh, this as I was preparing for this morning. 
uh, all of you who gave shoeboxes, and I know many of you did to our Christmas shoebox appeal, and uh, hundreds of thousands of shoeboxes all around the world get wrapped, packed and wrapped, stuffed full, packed and wrapped up, and uh, sent out to other parts of the world. Can you imagine right now, wherever it might be Christmas morning, lots of kids opening presents in all those shoeboxes that some of you guys were a part of. I just think that's really special because some of those guys who wouldn't have had anything else this year maybe, or maybe that's, that's their first gift that they've ever encountered. I just thought about that. I was like, that is super special. That's a good thing about gifts. And even some of you who gave in our gift giving at the uh, Christmas production, thank you. And uh, I know that even all of those local kids who are right now in our suburb, they're going to be opening presents that they wouldn't have got, and it's all because of you. So thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your giving. That's awesome. And all those, uh, this room, I saw like this room, Pastor Nikki had a whole team of helpers just wrapping, uh, literally, I don't know, there must have been more than a thousand gifts. Easy. Angel tree and uh, what else was there? There was all the gift giving ones as well for the three organizations. That was a lot. And uh, highly favored fingers. That's all I'm going to say for that one. But uh, gifts, gifts wrapped, uh, I think the way they get wrapped, the way they come, generally invokes a little bit of feeling, doesn't it? Uh, If it's just in a bag, I call that the lazy wrap, uh, because you didn't wrap it, (laughs) you just put it in a gift bag and it's got some handles, so you're like, well, (laughs) I get away with that one, don't I? I mean, some people go to the extra level just tying the handles with a ribbon, I feel like that's a little bit extra effort than just plonking it in the gift bag. Um, that, that gets an extra bonus. Uh, there's the wrapped presents in the gift bag. That's next level. That's not just wrapped. That's wrapped and a very practical wrap, a carry bag. I like those ones. They're extra cool. Uh, next level is ribbons, or not just a single ribbon, double ribbon. Double ribbon, sticker, a bit of twine, some white fluffy pom-poms or something. I don't know. Man, some people go all out uh, on the wrapping. I think they have more fun wrapping the present um, than actually what's inside. Sometimes the wrapping can throw you, though, can't it? I played a game with some friends a couple of days ago where you like you wrap, you buy all by presents. Have you all done that one? And then you take it in turns to, to unwrap and then you steal them and then they can be stolen and people get really like set on their gift. Like, I want these cushions. And then you find out that they bought the cushions themselves. I'm like, you can just go back to the store and buy some more. It's okay, peoples. But you get a big present and then you unwrap it and it's got a tiny little present inside there. I used to love doing that one for birthdays for my siblings. They're like, whoa! It's like a giant fridge box. Just wrapped it up with newspaper and inside it's just a tiny little ball or something. <laughs> that was the best. Or we all know the small ones, the most expensive. Yes. So when you get a really small present, you're like, oh, yes, this is going to be jewelry or something. It's going to be really nice. Always fun. What about shaking a gift that you shouldn't shake? You ever given a gift and someone's, oh, yeah. And they start shaking it, like, out of excitement. It's like, oh, I hope it's not b- broken now. We've had some gifts like that. You know, I think being born a baby, no one was expecting that. No one was expecting the king, the Messiah. I mean, most of Israel was expecting the Messiah to come riding him triumphantly on a white horse and, you know, flaming sword or something. And quite opposite, really, in every way, shape and form, uh, a baby. Uh, somewhere out in, in a farm, uh, in a manger. Uh, it's pretty, pretty next level, uh, unexpected. You know, I don't think Joseph was expecting to get two for the price of one. Uh, yep. Um, <laughs> fiance and baby, bonus. Woohoo! Um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm sure Mary would have preferred an already born baby gift from God. Um, hey, nothing is impossible, God. We could skip the whole birth part. Just give me the, the, the son of all the universe. <laughs> that, that would be just as good. Um, Herod didn't want him. Rome certainly didn't expect him uh, at all. You know, think about this. A couple hundred years later, uh, Rome, the empire that crucified Jesus, uh, now decided that he was, in fact, God, and all of them converted to Christianity. And this is an awesome bonus even for you and I for now. 
uh, the Roman cross that he was crucified on is now the symbol. It's a symbol of hope. The empire that crucified him has given the world a symbol of hope. No one was expecting that. It was the most awful death, the most painful thing they could come up with. And it's now a symbol of death being conquered, a stake in the ground for all time, that we have someone that died and res- was resurrected. We have our sins being forgiven by that, by that, and it is our salvation. It is the symbol of the best is yet to come. I love that. No one expected that. The cross, a gift to us all. So what did Jesus do? Well, I love all the miracles he did. Blind eyes opened. Deaf people heard again. He raised a servant from the dead, a widow's son, a brother and a friend, Lazarus, a little girl. He healed conditions that had hurt and afflicted people for many years, issues of blood and skin diseases. He set people free, adults and children, from strongholds of demonic oppression. He was moved with compassion. He loved the people around him. The sick and the oppressed were brought to him. They cried out for him and he leant in. He healed people who had been restricted in body, bent over, crippled. And many times he made a statement by doing it on the Sabbath. A day set apart to be with God, yet had been overrun by man-made ideals. Jesus came and let in to humanity. He covered an adulterer's shame and protected her from judgment. He revealed his divinity, his identity as the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world, first to a Samaritan woman who'd been divorced five times and was living with a man who wasn't her husband at that time. He took care of simple and practical needs, but in a way that absolutely astounded the crowds, even his care for the trivial things of life. In almost all his dealings, he shocked the culture of the day and did exactly what they didn't expect he should be doing if he were the Messiah. What an incredible life he lived. He was a king, yet he did not judge. He did not rule. He served. He sacrificed. And he tended to their needs. He chose to dine and spend time with those that nobody else would give the time of day. Zacchaeus, the chief of tax collectors, and he did it so often that they grumbled about him while he was always out whining and dining with the notorious sinners. Incredible. He chose disciples that were the obvious, sorry, that weren't the obvious choice, who went on to change the world forever. He was judged for hanging out with them. He endured hate and jealousy in his stride as he reached out to relieve people from suffering, even though sometimes it stirred the pot. He didn't care what it meant for him. Jesus overlooked himself and served those he had come for, and he went to the cross to die on their behalf, on your behalf, on my behalf, for the joy that was set before him, it says. He comforted a rebel who was hanging on the cross right next to him as he hung there too. And gave that man confidence that that very day they would be together enjoying paradise. What an incredible statement to make on the cross while you're suffering. It was awesome. Jesus is an incredible gift to humanity. What did Jesus What did Jesus teach? My friends, he taught us a new way to live. He taught us a new way to live, to love one another. He taught us to forgive one another. He taught us to serve one another, to place others. It's more important than oneself. To, To support, to champion each other. To pursue kindness, humility, meekness, mercy, purity, and peace. To do good to be generous, and to give freely. He said, give freely, as freely as you have received, give freely. Give without expecting anything in return. He taught us to seek the salvation of souls rather than to pursue accumulating stuff. I love that. What did Jesus 
come to do. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 21. It says that Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly throughout the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. At this time, quite close even to the beginning of Jesus' ministry, his fame was already becoming quite known of, quite heard of. The grapevine of Israel, the news spreading, and people were flocking to him, and it was the beginning of a massive public ministry. It says he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home. He went, as usual, to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the Scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah, the prophet, was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. From Isaiah 61, he read, And he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. And then he began to speak to them. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. This was like the first moment where they, they, they couldn't handle it any longer. Right after this, it said that all of them were just shocked at this statement. We know this guy. He grew up amongst us. Isn't this Joseph the carpenter's son? They couldn't comprehend that he could be the Messiah. They couldn't understand it. Despite the display of divine miracles, despite the, de- despite the display of, of just unending love and the incredible things that he had been doing, they're like, but, but, but we know this guy. It was an unusual gift. They couldn't get it. And it said they formed a mob and pushed him out of the synagogue, out to the edge of a cliff, because this particular town was built right close to a cliff. They pushed him up there, and their intent was to throw Jesus over and be done with it. There's a lot of uh, culture in that. They were like, this guy's a heretic. This guy's claiming to be God. Like, we, we can't allow this to go on. And it says that Jesus just walked through the crowd and left. Now, obviously, a miracle in itself, a moment where they couldn't touch him or something, or maybe they were frozen, or maybe they were like, oh, I don't want to be the first one, or I don't know what was going on, but they couldn't do it. And it's said that he literally walked through the middle of the crowd, and he went off. God protected him. It wasn't his time. He had more to do, and there was a lot more to do, and I love all of that Jesus went on to do. You know, Jesus, for us, sometimes we think about the things that we engage in, you know, day by day, week by week, month by month, and all year long, and we are at the end of yet another year. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that have happened in your life this year. Lots of stuff that you weren't expecting. Lots of things maybe happened that you were expecting, and you're you're grateful for them. Maybe there's some things that you're not grateful about. Maybe some things that you've really struggled with this year. Whatever has happened, I can tell you that Jesus knew about it all. He knows. He gets it. He's been with us. He understands. In the hardest times, the darkest times, I firmly believe He's with us the closest. Sometimes we can't feel it because we can't expect it because it's not a part of our natural makeup. But in the Spirit, He's there. He's with us. He loves us. He cares about us. He's for us. He's not against us. And he's a gift that's going to continue giving to each and every one of us, the whole world, into next year. Jesus is alive, and he's alive forevermore. He might have started as a baby, but he's a king. He might have started as a baby in a manger, but he is the ruler. He's coming back. There is expectation, there is excitement, there is anticipation for the future of what God is going to do. And it's not just in the time to come for the kingdom of heaven, but for now. 
there is good for you. There's good coming. And if the best hasn't yet happened yet, well, the best is yet to come. Amen? That's for you and I. So I encourage you as we come around Jesus today, as you go home, as you have lunch together, dinner together, as you spend time with family, I want to encourage you, maybe as a family or as an individual, take a moment to think about next year and to think about next year with the gift of Christ in it. To think about what next year could be like with Jesus inside your story. All that He has for you. All of the things that might seem unusual, but they're going to blow you away. Next year might just be your best year yet. If you're a believer, this morning, this is my hope for you, that these thoughts around what Jesus did and what He taught have inspired you again of the love and the relationship that you have with Jesus of all that He did and all that He does and all that He's going to do. And if you're not a believer, well, you once were, my hope is that today's thoughts might encourage you to join the faith of Christianity or join it again. I want to jump back to the start of Luke, in Luke chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. It says, while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. It doesn't matter, my friends, if it hasn't looked like it was meant to look like. It doesn't really matter if your life at this moment isn't what you wanted it to be. Maybe it's not what you expected it to be because I'm sure that we didn't expect Jesus to come as a baby boy and be born in a stable, in a manger. It's okay. Jesus understands. He knows what you're going through. That's the beautiful gift of Christmas. He's going to keep going through it with you. So if it hasn't looked like it was meant to look like, or that prayer hasn't been answered yet, or you're still holding on for something that you think, no, this this has to be, this should be, can I tell you that you can hold on, you can believe, because it's not just this time on earth that we have, because of that baby that was born, you and I have access to an eternal life, a life forevermore, and there's so much to come, Jesus is going to rule and reign on this earth, and He's going to raise the overcomers, we're going to rule and reign with them, and there's going to be so much more for you and I. And then the new heaven, the new earth, the new city of Jerusalem and all eternity, how it was designed, how the garden was given to us intended to be. It's okay. Just like Jesus' birth was an unusual gift, just like our earth does not look like it was designed or meant to look like, the best is yet to come. Relationship with Jesus is what gives all of us access to all of eternity. It's an awesome, beautiful, but unusual gift. Can I have the band please come and join me? Jesus changed the world and He changed it forever. You and I are here today because of Him. He may not have been the most popular guy. He might have certainly not been the most popular rabbi, but I can tell you He's the most famous. Jesus was the most famous rabbi and still is. He's the most famous teacher. Was and still is. Not everyone liked him. Even today, not everyone likes him. But he likes everyone. He loves everyone. He is the most famous. And he's still here today with you and I. Today, we are here because of Jesus. The most unusual gift. So why did Jesus come? For you. That's why Jesus came. Grace upon grace. We're going to come around a time of communion together this morning to remember the reason why He was born, the reason why He came. And uh, so I just invite you to grab those emblems. And uh, if you didn't uh, grab them on the way in, the team have got some. So just raise your hand. They'll bring them to you right now. And uh, church, let's take a moment to peel back the layers together now.
You know, today my thought for us as we share communion, church, is that this is the greatest gift of Jesus. His life for ours. This is why he came. This is the purpose of Jesus Christ. This is the purpose of that unusual gift. He was born a baby and he came in flesh and human form. Not to rule us, but to serve us. Not to judge us, but to take our place. This moment that we're going to partake in right now is we remember his body broken for us, his blood poured out. This moment washes us whiter than snow. God has the unique ability and the gift to forgive and forget. He doesn't remember our sins. And that's why he encourages us not to sin because of the consequence of humanity we do remember. We carry those burdens, we carry those weights. Well, my prayer today has been for you, church, that in this moment you could just lay it down. Let go of what you're carrying from 2023 or previous years and just put it at the cross. The symbol that was meant to harm him that gave us life. And take up his body. Take up this body. As we eat and drink of Jesus today, as we remember his sacrifice, this moment, don't allow the enemy to rob you of this. Don't allow him to say that, oh, you're the only one he can't save because it's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus is bigger than it all. So when you eat that bread today, and when you drink that fruit of the vine, the representation of his sacrifice, know that this is why he came. This is why he was born. This is what the Christmas story is all about. It's about you. He came for you to win you back, to set you free so that whatever wrong you've done, whatever shame or guilt or regret that you are carrying on this day, you and I get to celebrate life and freedom and joy. We've got hope for our salvation. That's what we remember today. A gift of life. It's the most unusual gift, but I'm thankful for it and I know you are too. So this morning as we come to a close, I invite you to stand to your feet. And I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to invite you all to just thank Him and partake of His body together. Would you close your eyes and let me pray for you today? Heavenly Father, for those that maybe struggled in their relationship with you this year, God, I pray that they would be re-inspired by who you are, what you did, and what you're going to do. Lord, for those that have never taken the step of personal relationship with you, God, I pray today that they would invite you into their life, that they would choose you, Jesus, as you have chosen them. In this moment, I pray that salvation would flow. Lord, that you would save us from a life alone, that you would save us from an eternity without you, that we would receive your gift of life, the reason that you came, the reason for this whole season. Jesus, we thank you and we honor you and we celebrate you today. And we say thank you for dying on that cross, for taking our place, for willingly choosing us. You love us. You care about us. You understand us. And you overlook it all. So Lord, today as we eat and as we drink together in communion, in unity, in oneness with each other and with you, Lord, I pray that you would do a powerful work in our bodies and a powerful work in our minds. We thank you for all of this, we pray in Jesus' name. Church, let's eat together. And let's drink together. Thank you, Lord. Just as I thank Him, why don't you take a moment to thank Him also. Jesus, we thank You for what You've done for us. We honor You today. We celebrate You. Lord, we stand together here as Your children, as Your bride, as Your family, Your church, the church of Jesus Christ. And we honor You today. We honor You. We exalt You. We lift You up right now in this place. And You lift You up in our hearts. Jesus, be enthroned in our lives. As our King. As our Lord, 
God, today I pray that you would help us to submit to you again, to follow you, to love like you loved, to live like you lived. Lord, let our lips declare the goodness, love, forgiveness, mercy, grace to ourselves and to those around us and to the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. The Bible says, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide us to the path of peace. Church, thank you for coming out today and for celebrating Jesus, for honoring Him. And I pray that it lays a foundation, even in your thought life for today, that you would remember Jesus what He's done for you and how much He loves you and why He came. God bless you. And uh, our last service of the year, next week, 31st, right here in the morning, I'm preaching a closing message from our series in Acts. It's going to be a fantastic final service for 2023 together. I encourage you to come on out and uh, it's going to be a great morning together. And it's, uh, it's going to be a special day uh, for Kinesi as well because uh, it's going to be her last Sunday with us. And uh, we're going to pray for her and send her off up to Cairns. I don't know why you'd go up to a, a sweat bowl like that. Um, I, I, I'm not convinced you've, you've heard correctly. Uh, I'm with Vossa, you should say in Brisbane. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. It's not true. It's going to be an exciting adventure for you, Kinesi. But uh, it's our last Sunday, 31st. Come here, 9.30, back to normal service times. It's going to be a wonderful day together as we finish the year in the house of God. And we're going to set up 2024. What's been our ceiling is going to be our floor. Amen? Amen. Well, God bless you. And let's finish with a f one of those fun uh, fast carols from the start of the set, please, Tiana. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day together. Merry Christmas. Come on, we're going to sing Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is here.
you have a lovely day. We'd love to see you again next week, 31st. We'll see you there.